Each morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., join Dr. D.Z. Cofield and Word of Hope Ministry with a relevant word to help you become all that God wants you to be. It's not about rituals. It's not about routines. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with a God who loves you so much. He loves you where you are, but he doesn't want to leave you there. That's each morning, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday with Dr. D.Z. Cofield. Oh, and by the way, I'm D.Z. Cofield. I'll see you then. The Barbara Jordan International Preschool provides children from infancy to pre-kindergarten with a superior character-building curriculum, nutritious meals, and a multi-language program. Can you imagine your child speaking Chinese and Spanish at the age of two? Invest in your child's future. Space is limited. For more information, call 832-217-3300 or go to pjipreschool.org. Barbara Jordan International Preschool, preparing children to change the world. Word of Hope Ministries Where we are loving God, loving all people, and changing the world Word of Hope Ministries. And now, your host, Dr. D.Z. Cofield. I'm Dr. D.Z. Cofield, Senior Pastor of the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Word of Hope Ministry. So many times we hear people sing this wonderful song, My Soul Has Been Anchored in the Lord. But let me ask you a question. Where is your spirit anchored? You see, so many times negativity comes towards us from a variety of sources and people, and we allow that negativity, great or small, to affect us in an adverse way. David, in our message today, wants to encourage you to remember not only how good God has been, but to focus on how good God is right now. You see, people are going to be negative towards you. People are going to be used by the enemy to come against you. Remember the same Peter who said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, Peter, is the same Peter who said to Jesus, be it far from you. And Jesus had to say to him, get thee behind me, Satan. People who are used by God, if they're not careful, will also be used by the devil. But you have to rest in God's goodness in your life. Not just how good God has been, but how good God is right now. So today, as we continue our look at this message, too blessed to be bitter, I want to encourage you to remember how good God has been and realize how good God is to you right now. Let's get to our message. Here's the second thing. Number two, you not only want to remember how the Lord has blessed you in your past, but two, realize how the Lord is blessing you right now. Realize how the Lord is blessing you right now. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 6 beginning at verse 1. The New Living Translation says, Then David again gathered all the elite troops in Israel, 30,000 in all. He led them to Bala of Judah to bring back the ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the ark of God on a new cart and brought it to Abinadab's house, which was on a hill. Uzzah and Ahio, Abinadab's sons, were guiding the cart as it left the house, carrying the ark of God. Ahio walked in front of the ark. David and all the people of Israel were celebrating before the Lord, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. 
But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand and steadied the ark of God. Then the Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the ark of God. David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named the place Perez Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah, as it is called today. David was now afraid of the Lord, and he asked, how can I ever bring the ark of the Lord back into my care? So David decided not to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom in Gath. Now watch what happens. David makes a decision, a godly decision to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to where it belongs. Here's the problem he ran into. He wanted to do God's will, but he wanted to do it his way. And when trouble came because he did it his way instead of God's way, he got angry with God. Some of y'all looking at me strange. Listen, the ark was resting at Abinadab's house. Abinadab was one of the sons of Jesse, one of David's brothers. And his name means father of generosity. Abinadab allows two of his sons, Ahio and Uzzah, to help transport the ark of the covenant. But watch what happens. The Bible says that when the Ark of the Covenant is transported, it has to be transported in a specific way. Poles have to be inserted into the rings on each side of the Ark, and then the Ark is to be carried, it is to be walked wherever it goes. Look at what David did. They got a new cart and new oxen. And they decided to move it their way because they had such a long way to go. God was not concerned about how far they had to go. He was concerned about how they were going to go. And so watch what happens. The text says they are literally walking with the oxen and the ark on the cart. And then check out what happens. The oxen stumble. And it looks like the ark might fall. Uzzah, the son of Abinadab, David's nephew, reaches out and touches the ark. Because Uzzah made a tragic assumption. He assumed his hand was cleaner than the ground. Somebody ought to hear me in here today. Because too many times we get in trouble because we think our way is better than God's way. Now, the name Uzzah means strength in yourself. And isn't that typically when we get in trouble? When we rely on the strength in ourselves instead of relying on God? You see, all David had to do was follow God's directions. And he talked about the anger of God being unleashed on Uzzah when Uzzah was working in disobedience against the word of God because the word was clear, no one was allowed to touch the Ark of the Covenant. Somebody in here, God is saying to you, you can't expect supernatural blessings when you're trying to accomplish them through a natural means. See, the problem for too many of us is we think our strength is the way to accomplish something. Paul says his strength is made perfect in our weakness because that's when we recognize how strong God really is. It's not when we function in our strength, but it's when we get to the end of our strength that we get to a place of desperation, and at the place of desperation, we become dependent instead of independent of God's power. And God says, you and I 
have to learn, watch this, how to keep our hands off of God's stuff. So watch what happens. They're following what they think is the right way. The oxen stumble. Uzzah reaches out his hand in his strength. He dies immediately. And David says, I don't know how I'm going to get the ark back to the people of God. And he lets the ark rest at Oben-Edom's house for three months. He comes back, but when he comes back, now he comes back with clear directions from the Word of God. Now he knows how to move the ark. Listen, I don't know about you, but I am grateful that even when I mess up, God is big enough to give me another chance. Anybody glad God will give you another chance? Yeah, we, we used to say he's the God of a second chance, but some of us blew right through the second chance. We, we got to third and fourth and then just add a zero behind whatever number you put up and just keep on going. He's the God of another chance. Even though David messed up, even though Uzzah died, God gave David another chance. And David is rejoicing in the opportunity to get it right. Someone in here today needs to get excited that God has given you another chance. God, God has given you another chance to get it right. God has given you another chance to respond the right way. God has given you another chance to get to where he wants you to be. You, you say, well, yeah, but pastor, you don't understand how long has it taken me. I don't care how long it's taken you to get where you are. Here's the wonderful thing about life. As long as you have life, health, and strength, you still have a chance to have a happy ending in your life. Somebody ought to hear me in here today. May have gotten off track somewhere along the line, but I can get back on track because I serve the God of another chance. And David recognized the blessings of the Lord on his life at that moment. That's why at the end of verse 12, if you read it, then King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's home and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark to the city of David with a great celebra celebration. See, you know what happened? He left it at Obed-Edom's house because he was scared to move it, and Obed-Edom's house was blessed beyond measure. Everything was blessed. And when he got the word that everything was blessed, then David learned that the problem was not with God. Oh, I might need to put a quarter in the meter and park right there for a second. L listen, God is no respecter of persons. And God has not stopped blessing people. So if God is not blessing you, the problem is not with God. Matter of fact, maybe you need to stop praying and asking God to bless your stuff. Maybe you need to find out what God is blessing and then start doing his thing. See, David never had to worry about what would come from the ark when he handled the ark the way God told him to. And once he saw that there was nothing wrong with the ark, David realized the problem was in how he was transporting it. I don't know about you, but when I read that passage and I look at Uzzah, I think to myself, here's a brother who meant well. Uzzah, his name means strength in yourself. He's the brother, the son of Abinadab, the nephew of David. When the Ark of the Covenant was rocking on the back of that cart, when the oxen stumbled and it looked like it might fall, He's the brother who stuck out his hand and assumed that his hand was cleaner than the ground. But watch this, his intentions were not the issue. The intention of the person never overrides complying with the instruction of God. God gave clear instructions how the Ark of the Covenant was to be moved. 
But David figured he would do it his way. Was it out of ignorance? Was it out of rebellion? You know what? I don't know. But here's what I do know. He didn't do it the way God wanted it done. How many times do you want God to bless, but you want his blessings on your terms? Instead of you saying, God, what are you blessing? Or God, what do you want me to do? Or God, what have you commanded me to do? And once I do what God has commanded me to do, then I look to God and say, now God, you know what I stand in need of, and I'm trusting you to provide it. No, we decide that we're going to take matters into our own hands, sometimes with good intentions, but we're still disobeying God because we're not following his instructions. And David teaches us the importance of following the instructions of God. Now, David had to realize he was being blessed at that moment. But the blessings that God was bringing into his life did not excuse his disobedience. And when they were disobedient, they suffered the consequences of their disobedience. My brothers and my sisters, I need you to know today, God is blessing you. He is. And for some of you, the blessings of God are not because of your obedience, but the blessings of God are in spite of your disobedience. Now, here's what I need you to understand. If there are blessings that are in your life right now, you can count those blessings. You can identify those blessings. I mean, right now, you can identify those blessings. And you can identify disobedience in your life. I mean, clear disobedience. I'm not, I'm not talking about something you can't control. I mean, some stuff that you are doing, that you are saying, that you know is not right in the sight of God. No question about it. Nothing you got to pray about. You don't have to read the word. You don't have to seek God. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pray. You know it's wrong. If there are blessings in your life right now, and you know you have not been obeying God as you should, how much more will you open yourself up to the full blessings of God if you decide to walk in obedience and do what God says regardless of how you feel or what you think. You know, I believe there are many people right now, uh, if you took the blessings of God and you likened them to a faucet, and that faucet was barely turned on, and water was trickling out of that faucet, and you said, well, I'm getting water, I got enough water to drink, and you know, if I, if I put a bucket under there, man, I, I, I can get enough water to get by. And God says, why are you satisfied with being a get-by Christian? Why are you satisfied with being a trickle saint? When in obedience, all you need to do is open up the faucet of God's blessings. All you have to do is open up the faucet of God's blessings and then give yourself room to receive the blessings that God has for you. As a matter of fact, in the book of Malachi, God says, I can open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive. I mean overflowing blessings. But the key is obedience. It's obedience in terms of how you live, in terms of your walk with God, uh, how you interact with other people. It's your obedience in terms of obeying God's words and God commands in terms of spending time in the word, uh, in terms of worshiping God and your giving, in terms of worshiping God as a lifestyle, day to day, all of those things are places that God looks for your obedience. And for many of us, we make the mistake of confusing perfection with obedience. Here's what I mean. We say things like, nobody's perfect. And when somebody says nobody's perfect, you know what they're really saying? Because no one is perfect. One, nobody has a right to say anything to me about what I do. And secondly, because nobody's perfect, you need to accept my imperfections and say they're okay. 
And God says, listen, you can be imperfect, but you can still strive for obedience. Every one of you who's listening right now, you know the difference between imperfection and disobedience. What we're really talking about is an act of the will. When I say, you know what, I'm not doing right and I'm not going to do right and I'm imperfect anyway, so you better accept me not doing right as the way life is. And God says, no, I want you to focus on being obedient. Recognize how good I am right now. The fact that David could go down to the house of Abinadab and retrieve the Ark of the Covenant, man, that was a blessing. The Ark of the Covenant had been outside of the hands of Israel for years. Here he is now. He has an opportunity to retrieve the Ark, but he didn't do it the right way. So when blessings come, make sure you use those blessings in the right way. You don't want to use the blessings of God to foster and fuel your disobedience. When you realize how good God has been, not just extraordinary goodness, I mean just every day, man, just waking up, it's a blessing. Now, what are you going to do with the gift of life that God has given to you? The choice is yours. We'll be back in just a moment to close today's program. Out of 34 international countries and cities, students in the U.S. ranked 14th in reading, 17th in science, and 25th in math. As your child prepares to enter a globally competitive economy, where will you enroll your child to learn the science, engineering, and math needed to compete with children around the world? The Global Learning Village. Let me take this opportunity to say thank you once again for tuning in to Word of Hope Ministry. Thank you for letting us in your home. Thank you for allowing us to touch your heart. Now, just a couple of things I want to share with you today. First of all, if you'd like to follow me during the week, you can follow me on Instagram at DZ Cofield. You can follow me on Twitter at DZ Cofield. You can follow me on uh, Facebook at DZ Cofield. And you can follow me on Tumblr at, you guessed it, DZ Cofield. I promise you, you won't get inundated with a lot of good morning, Facebook family. I know some of you like to do that stuff. That's not me. You'll get some words of inspiration, some very encouraging stories, something that's going to inspire you and encourage you along your life's journey. I also want to take the opportunity to invite you to the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. I want you to come and share with us, be a part of our worship experience. One of the things that I love about our church is one, we are a multi-generational church. We have people who come to our church who are children and babies, infants, all the way into super seniors. And there's a ministry for you, whether it's the children's ministry, youth ministry, young adults, uh, married and couples ministry, senior adult ministry. There's a ministry to help you grow, to move from where you are to where God wants you to be. We're at 3015 North McGregor Way in the medical center part of the city of Houston, right by Herman Park. Come on and check us out. Three services, go to the website. You can get more information there. Now I wanna cover you today in believing prayer. I want you to walk in the blessings of God in your life. And I want you to realize that God is blessing you right now. I want you to say that, say that to yourself right now. It doesn't matter what's going on around you and don't allow the absence or presence of opposition or enemies to cause you to miss seeing the blessings of God in your life. As a matter of fact, you know what I've learned? Some people are like barometers. Uh, they let you know how much God is blessing you, and sometimes they let you know the blessings of God are on the way. Let me give you an example. 
um, there was a person in my life and I could tell, I mean, I began to see a pattern. When they clowned, when they started acting up for really no reason, I would look and go, wow, okay. Wow, blessings are on the way. And sure enough, man, they'd act a fool and within a week, God had a major blessing. And I started seeing how the devil wanted to use them to discourage me, to frustrate me, to hurt me, to get me angry to the place that then I couldn't receive the blessings that God was bringing my way. What God is preparing for you, God is preparing you for. Walk in the blessings. Let your spirit rest in the blessings of God. Come on, let's pray. God, thank you today for your word. Thank you that we have again been encouraged to know that we are too blessed to be bitter, that you have blessed us in our past and you are blessing us right now. And for those under the sound of my voice, God, those who are about to leave home, going to work, going to school, going about their day-to-day -day activities, help them to walk in those blessings, to not focus on the negative, but to focus on the positive, to not focus on the bad or the meanness of people, but focus on your goodness in their life. So they will constantly be reminded in the midst of the storms and the rains, the pain and the problem, that you are good all the time. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Each morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., join Dr. D.Z. Cofield and Word of Hope Ministry with a relevant word to help you become all that God wants you to be. It's not about rituals. It's not about routines. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with a God who loves you so much. He loves you where you are, but he doesn't want to leave you there. That's each morning, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday with Dr. D.Z. Cofield. Oh, and by the way, I'm D.Z. Cofield. I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.